Each minute is critical. There is no time to negotiate like a regular negotiation. There is no time for uh, analyzing the, the, the people, the, the media, the governments, the leaders needs to understand that each minute is critical because a few more days and my wife would, would not got back. Yoni, I want to begin with you, Yoni Asher, because you're unique in this particular panel in that you suffered the horrors of October 7th with your family, but your family has been released. Would you just take a few minutes and, and, and share what happened for your family on that day? Uh, first of all, thank you and thank you for hosting us here tonight. Um, like you said, my wife and two young daughters, Raz and Aviv, which are only five and three year old from this January, were taken hostage on October 7th. And on November 24, they got back on the first deal uh, at the first time. And the fact that I am sitting here with parents and brothers of people that are still there, very difficult to me. Um, on October 7th, my wife and two daughters were visiting their grandmother in Kibbutz Niroz. We are living in the Sharon area, which is in the center of Israel. Um, and I wasn't with them. My wife went out without me and uh, they spent the night. Um, and at the morning when the alarms started, and my wife and I talked on the phone and on WhatsApp. And around 10, we got disconnected. I couldn't reach her anymore. And uh, um, things started to get harder and, har and harder. Uh, as I watched the news, I saw the horrific massacre um, increasing and the number of casualties increasing. Uh, and I knew that this is not the uh, usual, as much as you can say, usual uh, situation. And um, after, I think it was 5 p.m., Hamas released a video uh, using TikTok. That video got to me. And um, on that video, I witnessed my wife, my older daughter, Raz, my young daughter, Aviv, getting kidnapped on a tractor with a cart and Hamas. What, what was your was, reaction at that moment? I can't even imagine, but can you articulate that? Well, um, um, seeing your family they, getting taken by Hamas terrorists, um, screaming Allah Akbar all, all around after uh, all those hours, which are hoping um, they will somehow will be rescued, um, I, I told you that earlier, it, it can be described in words, unfortunately. Uh, this option does not exist. Mm -hmm. um, I can only say that uh, literally all the energy ran out of my body that moment. And um, it's a moment that uh, transcends mm -hmm. space and time and above all logic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I had to really quick um, recover because I understand that. I am the only one that can fight for them because they were kidnapped along with their grandmother, my mother-in-law, and my father-in-law, Gadi Moses, who is still there. Then your mother-in-law um, was then, you found out yeah, she was killed. Yeah, um, about 10 days later, we got announced that my mother-in-law was killed during the abduction in a shooting incident. Um, my wife was injured in that incident. She lost a lot of blood. Uh, during the captivity, she was stitched with no substance in front of my daughter's eyes. I wish we had all night, but I want you to take us now to their, uh, at least in this group, they're the group, part of the group that came out. They were released. What can you tell us about what they're telling you, uh, what they experienced, how they're doing? Well, it's it's you need to separate between the little girls to my wife because the little girls have no idea what it, what Gaza is, what hostages means, what war means. They don't know these words. Mm -hmm. They have their own language. 
They know that evil people took them with guns. They saw it, you can't deny it. Um, so there are difficulties. Um, we are dealing with some um, nights that includes waking up. Um, sometimes they, they are overreacting. Um, and uh, my wife, after loss, losing her mother and her brother, who also got killed on that morning, um, is only now have the time to 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 mourn mm -hmm. her relatives because during that time in captiv captivity, she ha had no time. She was automatically functioning, and uh, it's very difficult. It's each day for us. It's October seventh. Sigali Cohen, Siggy. Um, we've not met before, but would you talk about Elia? Talk about who he is. Talk about what you're going through. What you know at this point. <clears throat> Elia is 26 years old. Very handsome man. <laughs> you can see. He's a marketing person. He loves life. He loves to dance. He travels all over the world with a lot of friends. He's the stick of the friends. Mm -hmm. Everyone uh, wants to be near him because uh, he's very warm. They go to the m music festival and at 6.30 they heard the, the alarms and they run away from the party, from the Nova party. They go to shelter in Kibbutz Raim and they wait there for help. And after in an hour, they heard the uh, two vans with a uh, loud Arabic music. The terrorists came to this shelter and they came in and started to throw a an RPG and the uh, and live fire and wounded. And then uh, in this shelter, small shelter, was 29 people, and most of them were murdered. Some of the bodies that killed there are felt on Ziv, the girlfriend of Elia, and she was under those bodies for more, more than three hours, not moving, her face was on the ground, and she, she just uh, looked like she's dead. And Elia was the one dead, yeah. injured by a bullet. In his leg, is that correct? In his leg? In his leg, yes. He felt on the bodies, and then the terrorist came and took him to the van. And we have a picture from Gaza that said, uh, Israeli prison is in Gaza. Mm. It's a nightmare. Mm. I'm not eating, I'm not sleeping. Mm. I'm trying to do everything to know where is Elia, what happened to him. Nobody see, them, see him. Mm -hmm. I interview everywhere mm -hmm. that I can do. Mm -hmm. That uh, everything, everyone in all over the world will know this story and the story of uh, 135 more hostages. And it's very, very, very difficult. Now we're going to talk to um, an Israeli whose son was fighting to get your loved ones home. And um, unfortunately, um, he gave his life for this country. Not Jewish, Gidon Bayer. You're from a German family. Your family before you came, not that they were involved in the Holocaust, but you said, and your family said, uh, to atone for German atrocities. And so how can we help Israel and the Jewish people? Uh, and for your son, who didn't have to serve, or at least didn't have to serve in combat, to not only serve in combat, but serve in a special forces unit, Maglan, would you tell us about Yulia and, and why he loves this country. Why do you love this country? Because you be, your story became a big story when he was killed in combat because most Israelis were like, wait a minute, a German evangelical family is fighting for us? Like, that's a big story. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, המשפחה שלנו, uh, הורים שלי הגיעו בשנת שבעים ושתיים לארץ. My family, my parents came to Israel in 1972. הם באו מתוך אהבה לישראל, ואהבה לישראל זה מתוך אהבה לאלוהי ישראל. They came here out of a great love to God, uh, to the God of Israel and to Israel, the country of Israel. ההורים שלי ניהלו בית הבראה לניצולי שואה בשבי ציון. My parents conducted a meditation center in שבי ציון. ובנו מאוחר יותר בית חולים סיעודי לניצולי שואה במעלות. And later on they, um, they created a hospital um, to help people, survivors of the Holocaust, uh, to be treated there. ולתוך זה אני גדלתי. I grew up into that reality. ושני המקומות מתופעלים על ידי גרמנים נוצרים מאמינים שבאים לעבוד שנה פלוס. The place was um, conducted by uh, German people who came to volunteer there for a period of time for more than a year or so. ושם גם הגיעה אשתי. And my wife also came there. והכרנו והתחתנו. That's where we met and we got married. והקמנו את המשפחה שלנו במעלות ויש לנו חמישה ילדים. And then uh, we brought up a family together and we had five children together in Ma'alot. שהילדים שלנו גדלו במעלות וחוו גם את מלחמת לבנון השנייה. Our children grew up in Ma'alot and they, um, they saw also the second Lebanon war. שישבנו חמישה שבועות במקלט והפגיזו אותנו. For five weeks we were sitting in the shelter while being bombed. וכשהגיע הזמן ללכת לצבא, אז הבת שלנו, יש לנו שני בנות גדולות, אחת מהבנות, היא אמרה שבזמן מלחמת לבנון השנייה, חיילים נלחמו בשבילה, שהיא עכשיו רוצה לתת גם את החלק שלה, וזה לא היה שאלה בשבילה. And uh, when it was time to recruit to the army, um, my daughter said that uh, during the Second Lebanon War, um, soldiers, Israeli soldiers, were fighting to keep them safe. So now it was her turn to do that, to do the same. It was not even a question. So they both recruited and went to the army and served uh, in special units. ואחרי זה גם שני הבנים. And after that also our two boys. שאוריה גם היה ברור לו שהוא התגייס והוא התגייס לצנחנים. And then um, after that אוריה also it was clear to him uh, that he would recruit to the army and he recruited to the um, parachuting unit. ובמיון שהיה בצנחנים בחרו אותו ליחידת מגלן. And he was uh, chosen to the special unit מלן. Uh, בשביעי לאוקטובר uh, הוא היה הראשון שהקפיצו בשש וחצי בבוקר. On October 7th he was the first one who has been called for duty um, early in the morning. ואחרי זה את הבן השני ואת שני הבנות And soon after that, um, our second uh, son was called and also our daughters. Uriah and Suriel were combating in uh, Beiri and Kfar Aza. And it was very It was very clear to them what was happening and why this war was going, was starting. Suriel 
אמר לי בצורה מפורשת אנחנו נלחמים בשליחים של השטן. צוריאל told us specifically that they were um, at war with the, um, with the devil's um, people. אחרי זה התחילה המלחמה בתוך רצועת עזה שגם לשם אוריה נכנס בהתחלה לדרום, לצפון הרצועה אחרי זה גם לדרום הרצועה. Soon after that um, אוריה went into Gaza first he went to the northern border uh, of the Gaza Strip and soon after that to south of uh, Gaza בדרום הרצועה שם הוא נפצע קשה הוא קיבל כדור לראש and then he was badly hurt and he was wounded in, was shot in the head וארבע ימים אחרי זה הוא נפטר four days after he passed away Well, I, I, you know, I want to thank you for your, your service to the country. And your, your, your love for this country is just extraordinary. I, I, and um, your whole family service, I want to say thank you. Gideon, I just want to say, uh, I know where your faith comes from. I think of the words of Jesus, of Yeshua, who said, uh, a man has no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. And... Uh, As a fellow follower of Yeshua, I look forward to meeting you Eliyah, in heaven one day. Um, but in the meantime, we keep fighting. So thank you very much. As I wrapped up my interview with these incredible Israeli hostage families, I, I asked them if they had anything else they wanted to tell the media and the world, and this is what they said. My wife, a few days after she got back, had an infection. The doctors specifically said, if you weren't If you wouldn't get back, you were died over there. The amount of uh, antibiotics that they gave to her was not avail available in Gaza. So definitely she would die. Mm -hmm. And that stressed the importance of those people who are sitting here mm -hmm. and the people who are there. Each minute is critical. There is no time to negotiate like a regular negotiation. There is no time for uh, analyzing. Mm -hmm. The, the, the people, the, the media, the governments, the leaders needs to understand that each minute is critical because a few more days and my wife would, would not got back. Mm, okay. Thank you. Sigi? As Yoni says, the hostages don't have any time. My son is wounded. And every day that he's still there and they don't know what happened with him. And No, I, I don't know if we get a care medical or something else. It's very dangerous for him for, and for the other hostages. And I ask you to be ambassadors in all over your world, in all your world, and, uh, and speak and tell our stories in your countries. That whole world will know what the hostages um, have been through there and they help us to press everywhere that you can do to, to bring them home now.